Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new Let's Play. This game was generously bought for me by uh, my friend Reva of Jill Sandwiches. And that was kind of a surprising um, turn of events because I had actually uh, bought this for another friend uh, a year prior, I think. Maybe two years prior. I can't remember now. Um, so <laughs> it, it's an interesting game. I, I, I think it was bought for me as a bit of a bit of a jape, but uh, I decided we're going to play it anyway. Um, what is Daymare 1998? Well, um, they describe it as a modern indie take on early 90s kind of survival horror games. It makes me wonder if they ever played any, to be honest, because it's more like the uh, early 2010 sort of survival games, uh, even more modern survival games. Um, I don't really see what this has in common, to be honest, with early survival horror games. Um, I've played lots of them. Uh, this certainly does seem to be its own thing. Uh, it's an interesting game. It was made by a small group of 10 people, roughly, uh, and originally this was going to be the Resident Evil 2 fan remake that Cap uh, Capcom kind of like, you know, stomped out. But instead of just stomping it out, uh, what they did is they actually invited the guys who made that demo over to their studio had a bit of a chat, a bit of a sit down, and they gave them uh, a little bit of support and encouraged them to stop working on that and produce their own IP. And they did. And it became Daymare 1998, which is a game that has some interesting ideas. However, the execution is very questionable uh let's just say that um not the worst game in the world you know it definitely feels like it was made by a, a couple of people <laughs> um so don't expect a huge kind of triple a adventure because it is not however it's it's okay it's okay uh the story is fine i guess um you know it serves its purpose it does the job we actually play as multiple characters in this game the trouble is none of the characters are really that good because of the writing really the writing is what really really lets this game down um it's got lots of puzzles uh the puzzles range from actually quite good to maddening uh, but that's okay. I've already completed this game once, so I know all the solutions and that kind of stuff. Uh, lots of backtracking in this game as well. Also, some of the uh, maps in this game, some of them are actually not bad. You know, there's some really nice, healthy potential there. Other maps, well, we'll get into that. The actual combat in this game is fine. It works fairly well, actually uh animations let this game down really and uh, apparently one of the reasons this game is, is the story and the the dialogue and all that kind of stuff is so wonky and ropey is because uh, well english wasn't their first language and yeah yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah you 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 can see that uh apart from that it's not bad it's i think it's like 30 pounds or i don't know i guess 40 dollars or whatever is it worth it <sighs> i'm gonna say no <laughs> if this was like a 10 15 pound game yeah sure i think they 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 massively overpriced this game uh but however if that means that their next game is going to have a much bigger budget and, you know, which is almost released, by the way. They're making a prequel to this, which I'm absolutely on board for. If that means we're going to get a better quality game, then fine. This game also has the original voice actor 
for Leon. Uh, his name escapes me right now because I haven't written it down in my notes because I'm an idiot. And uh, it also has Leon's new voice actor in it. Unfortunately, the original voice actor of Leon is no longer with us. The only other thing that's going to bug me uh, with this game was the sheer amount of diary entries. Guys, I hope you like listening to stories. Because this game went absolutely crazy with the diaries. There, There's loads of them. Some of them... One of them is nearly 2,000 words. Yeah, that's, that's an essay. Um, there's a few that are quite lengthy. It's bizarre, to be honest. Uh, there's also diaries where you have to alt-tab out of the game, put a code into a website, and read the transcript diary from there. That is awful game design. Um, now, the developer, their excuse is, well, those diaries aren't actually, you know, supposed to be part of the game. Uh, they're just flavour text for fans. It's like, well, if they're not important to the game... Why bother? But, you know, whatever. Anyway, without me waffling on, because it sounds like I'm being kind and negative at this game, and it it's not terrible. Let's get into it, shall we? Before I waffle on anymore. It's got an interesting, uh, like, reloading system in this game as well. Uh, we're going to go new game. We're going to overwrite. And you've got classic 90s mode. I don't know why this is called classic 90s mode. Because it doesn't really have anything to do with being a classic 90s game. I, I, That's confusing. So, play the game as intended by Invader, Studio, Invader Studios team. Welcome back to the real survival horror. None of that makes sense, given the context of the game. Uh, uh, pfft, yeah, sure. Or you've got the modern take. Now, this modern take was actually added into the game um, quite a bit after release. So, are you more confident with the new generation horror games? You'll react and run faster for a smoother combat gameplay. No magazines or double reload mechanics in this mode. Shoot, kill, reload. Double reload mechanics? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the reloading in this game is strange. It's like the original... Um, classic 90s horror games except this system was never ever to my knowledge in a classic 90s I don't know I don't know where they're getting that from um, I think they're just saying that for the sake of saying it uh, the only thing the only similarity with this double reload mechanic that I can actually think of is Resident Evil Outbreak if you could find an extra magazine you have to you know, take that magazine out and manually reload it with bullets. But it's more seamless and easier to do in Resident Evil um, Outbreak than it is in this game. Anyway, either or, but we're going to go for the classic 90s mode just because. That's the way the game uh, is supposed to be played. And that's, to be honest, that's the way um, I actually played it the first time. We're gonna go normal mode. Uh, we're gonna go e. We're not gonna go easy. I haven't tried daymare mode yet. Apparently, that's really, really difficult. From what I've read up, I don't know if it is because I haven't tried it. Normal, however, this game is very, very, very easy. Uh, it's kind of crazy easy, but there are some frustrations. Uh, so for the purpose of this let's play and not wanting to kill myself we're gonna go normal brightness is fine uh, you can turn HUD ammo like on and off I guess hang on I guess we'll have it on uh, I think I had it on before possibly yeah we're gonna have HUD ammo on anyway and let's go and enter the world of Daymare 1998. Several hours have gone by since communications with the Aegis Laboratory have been cut off. Now, two teams of highly trained Hades, Hexacore Advanced Division for Extraction and Search, yes, somebody actually writ that and thought that was okay, 
opt-ins are called out to investigate their mission find the missing researchers who seemingly vanished without a trace and retrieve sensitive highly classed uh, highly classified materials for a clandestine branch of the US government the damn government tasked with gaining access to the lower levels of the lab special agent Lev barges onto the second service entrance and it is there that he discovers the security system has initiated a facility-wide quarantine, automatically shutting everybody in and serving as a warning to would-be invaders that some kind of experiment has gone horribly, horribly wrong. Yeah, so... <sighs> that's the kind of quality of the writing. It's very questionable. Um, it doesn't get better either. It kind of <laughs> gets worse. But... It's a small indie game, okay, made by 10 people. The biggest issue is it wasn't priced appropriately. Uh, anyway, let's go meet our characters, our Hades team, which if you need to understand what these guys kind of are, they're basically the umbrella mercenaries. All that matters on the chessboard are good moves you take to achieve this result. What I do is bide in the shadows, where I can strategically exploit the most vulnerable pawns. But this time had to be different. This time, I had to involve my hand directly. But let's get things in the right order. So I began the first phase my plan. Requesting the evacuation of all remaining personnel. Code Blue, repeat, this is a Code Blue emergency. Please respond, anyone, please. My name is Rebecca Jordan. I'm a doctor at the Aegis Medical Facility on the North Ball Islands. We have a problem of some magnitude here. There's a situation in the building that requires... There's been a terrible mishap. I, I think we need to squawks that anyone with a bigger stick, which is pretty much everyone. Never should have pulled his ass out that fire back with Bloom in 94. Thanks, Hayden. Er, understood, Major. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I should just let the task go. HQ, 
Hugh, this is Sandman Action. The descent for November Foxtrot India. Standing by for a mission goal. Sandman Action, this is Hugh. You are a mission goal. Authentication Echo Golf 394 at time 's the quality of the uh, dialogue and can't get much worse right um, <clears throat> surely not right <laughs> oh yeah so basically there's So he's talking about a DID, which is on our wrist here. This is our inventory, basically, and it's it's okay. It's just really, really bloody clunky to use. Uh, it's not intuitive at all. Now, this is our inventory here. You can see we have 12 slots. That is all we have. And uh, we've been dropped into this facility as a heavily armed you know, Hades mercenary. Uh, we have two magazines for our gun, and we have our primary weapon, which would be the uh, uh, SMG there. Uh, yeah, we just have one magazine for that. <laughs> it, yeah, doesn't really make a lot of sense, but okay. Um, and now we can also use this thing to hack doors as well. Uh, we've got our health monitoring system here and our overdose meter below our health. Don't worry about the overdose meter. Uh, apparently it's bad if you overdose on chemicals, but I've never even become close to that. Like, I, d I don't know, I'll be honest with you, I don't even know how you overdose on things. I don't know, that was absolutely not an issue on my playthrough. Um, now our health goes up to 100%. You can heal above 100%, uh, up to 130%, but if you go above 100, it will slowly tick down. Now. Uh, we also have this interesting reload system where, if you look, we have a spare magazine for our handgun. Now, the game will tell you you can't just go into inventory and put bullets in your gun. Uh, you know, you can, by the way, so I'm not really sure what that's about. So you can hold down the reload button. There we go. You can hold down the reload button to slowly reload. But by doing that, you actually take the magazine out of your gun and put it back into your pocket. Or, you can do a quick reload, where you throw the magazine onto the floor with all of the bullets that were left in it, and then after the battle you have to pick it up later. Uh, the game will kind of stress this importance of this system, it never really becomes a thing in the game. Uh, so, but you can just do the Resident Evil, you pick up your bullets, you combine, put them in the magazine. Now one annoying thing about this inventory is when you select an item, right, you see the top row there with our two weapons. You can't just scroll up to that. You have to push E to go up to your weapons. This is infuriating and causes problems. Why you can't just push up? to go to your weapons, I don't know. But anyway, it doesn't matter if you don't have a magazine, because you can just reload the same as you did in the original Resident Evils. So how that active reload, dual reload system is similar to 90 survival horror games, I don't know. But anyway, it's an interesting system, and it seems really complicated and annoying, but it, it's, it's all right, it's fine. Well, it looks like we were late to the party here, doesn't it? 
Hmm. So push four, we've got a flashlight. Uh, the flashlight doesn't run out of um, power or anything. And there's two ways of running as well. You can push uh, forward to walk normally. You can hold shift to sprint. And then you, uh, well, to jog, I should say. And then you can hold forward, shift, and space bar. Yes, that's a combination to do a long running um, sprint, which is sort of important, but kind of annoying. Objective confirmed. Looks like the contagion leaked out from a couple tanks crammed into the area. There are also sure signs of a firefight and explosive residue. Proceeding with the mission. Over. Yeah, well, that looks bad. Looks like things have gone very south here. Well, that's okay. Let's go find out what actually happened, shall we? Now, as for exploration and stuff like that in this game, there really isn't any. So, you know, you don't have to worry about, you know, scouring the areas too well. It's about time you guys got here. You're with emergency response, right? That's right. Agent Liev. How's the leg? Oh, it hurts like hell. But I'll be alright. Can't move very far, though. That's unfortunate. Listen, I need to search this place for survivors. I'll come back for you as soon as survivors? I can. Survivors? Yeah, well, good luck with that. Anyway, I'll be waiting here. I just need to rest my eyes a little. Yeah, you rest your eyes, friend. And because we're evil McEvil, We've got to pop all the survivors we find. You know, just in case you needed uh, any more proof that we're not actually not nice people. So, that actually looks like a diary. It isn't. There's also, like, bobblehead things to shoot. But, like, I found loads of them. But they don't give you anything. So, there's no point. So, peep this little fella here. This little bloodied red skeleton dude. Yeah, we're going to be seeing him a lot. In fact, I think of... Yeah, look, he's, <laughs> he's there as well. Uh... Odd context for that. Someone that seems to have completely melted away. Um. Lee up to Mission Control, Sandman. I made contact with an Aegis worker. I followed the protocol. I'm now heading to the control room to begin loading procedures. Over. Copy that. This all brings back memories from 94. Especially that day when you opened fire on all those poor innocent people. Or what was left of them. Orders are orders, Major, and those innocent people weren't exactly civilians. When you finally get your ass out of that chopper and onto the battlefield, we'll talk about it. Proceeding to objective, over. Yeah, you can see these guys don't really like each other very much. They've got a submarine down there. Interesting. Wonder if that'd be important. Yeah, these guys really don't like each other that much, like, at all. Someone must have had a lot of fun down here. I think they did. Hey, it's our red friend. Following us around. Right, so we have to restore power first. Well, let's go have a little look at that, shall we? See if we can find any more, like, ammo or... What's this? So, rapid use quick slot. Yep. So, we can assign things to a uh, quick slot. This is a health fluid. It's like your standard healing item of the game. It's more like so this is basically like a red and a green herb mix or no say this is two green herbs um that's the best way i guess to explain that uh it doesn't give you your health back like straight away it comes back over time now you can jump into your inventory and you know cycle use to use it or you can assign it to a quick slot uh which it actually already is and we can uh, tap Q to use it. Loads of controls. Now, this energy bar 
This is basically your single green herb. Uh, you can't combine that with anything, but you do get another item that gives you a similar amount of health that you can combine later on. Quite a few items and health things in this game. Uh, it's, you know, it's kind of cool. It's just fine. It, like I say, this game does have uh, a lot of solid ideas. Because unfortunately the execution is a little bit questionable. Alright. Nothing here. Lots of uh, sealants and things. Not really sure what they're going to be using all those for. Hello, friend. How you doing? You having a little bit of a sleepy? Looks like a bank transac uh, ta transaction made out for Jay Phelps for one million dollars. Well, I hope it was worth it, Jay Phelps. What have we got? We got some more bullets. Uh, this game gives you a lot of bullets, by the way. Um, you know, ammo isn't... Ammo's not a concern in this game. Like, at all. Another magazine there. I guess we'll take it. It's only got five rounds in it, though. Uh, now, I don't like actually having too many magazines on me. Because, as you can see, they really do eat up your inventory space. And, to be honest, they're not super necessary if you're uh, quick with the inventory system. The biggest barrier with the inventory system is just how slow it takes. Because obviously, you know, the old Resident Evil, Silent Hill, stuff like that. You push the inventory button, pauses the game, straight in there. This game's not like that. Anywho, first puzzle of the game. And that looks like the control panel that's literally ripped straight out of Jurassic Park. I read your file, Ke uh, Kevin. Your resume is quite impressive, despite your age. It seems you already installed and maintain your share of sophisticated equipment that most techs here don't even know exist. Now, I'm not trying to scare you, but I want you to know exactly what you're getting into. I heard you asked a co-worker what kind of research is being conducted here. If I had to hazard a guess, it must involve the UFO they found off the coast of this island. These scientists are clearly seeking ways to permanently alter the human genome to create super human alien hybrids joking obviously but this is a top secret government facility and the suits here won't hesitate to lock you up and throw away the key if you give them reason to places like this naturally employ state-of-the-art computer systems and machinery that go well beyond the scope of most technicians lucky for you the thermoelectric generators uh, although extremely powerful, are, simple, are very simple to use via an interface. The only real hurdle you'll come across is the odd time where a power outage occurs. In this situation, all you need to do is find a PC to check which areas shorted out, as indicated by a flashing red dot. Unfortunately, the repair process isn't automatic. You'll have to restore power manually whilst using the control panel to bypass the areas marked in red which will turn green if you are successful. Just follow the instructions on screen and I'm sure there won't be any problems, but if you run into something serious, give me a call and I'll send someone down to help you. Don't forget that loose lips sink ships. Welcome aboard and good luck. Mick O'Hagan, Chief Maintenance Officer. All right, cool. So let's have a little look here. This one here will show us all the systems that are powered down. So let's get this place working again, shall we? Now, it would be nice if we could just use the mouse to navigate these things, but we can't. So we want the cargo area on, we want the submachine shaft, we want the lab access. You don't want the helipad access, because that you know, fills up this energy bar really quick. Uh, the bar that's in the middle of the screen there, the three lights. You've kind of got to turn everything you need to on whilst balancing the power, and that's you know the thing here. But, you know, it's not too bad. Uh, I think this is the yeah, reception. And now you can see the monitor from this angle, which is actually quite nice. Um, there's a lot of puzzles in this game that you need to look at other things. But most of those involve you having to leave what you're looking at to go over to something else. So the fact that that's in this shot is actually quite a nice little introduction to the puzzle system. Um, server room we want. Security room. There we go. And that, I believe, will do it. Also worth noting... Oh, we've got zombies! Also worth noting is... 
the autosave system in this game. Now you can manually save. What the hell are these things? Oh, they're zombies. Quite often the zombie will just take one bullet. And like I said, they're very weak. Sometimes they'll take considerably more. But most of the time it's just, you know, like one, maybe one to four bullets, I guess. 